By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are opening some mail and look at this. I've got three envelopes to open. I'm not quite sure what's in these. Is that a bad sign? Do I have an addiction problem? I know this one is from Roby. So this one I think I know. So let's just start with opening up this one. Um, yeah, this is safe to cut. So this is from Mirlo Place in the Netherlands. And there we go. Just gonna cut this open as well. So it's more accessible. I think these are some of the dark cards. Dance of Many, I believe, one of the cards. We have an upcoming uh, The Dark Tournament, so that's basically why I'm trying to kind of get my hands on some of the dark cards. Um, look at this, there are, let's make some space here, two, and also two here. This one is Dance of Many, yep. Dance of Many, really good and interesting card. Like it's too blue to cast an enchantment and when Dance of Many is brought into play, choose a target summon card in play, then put a token creature in play and treat it as if you have just brought an exact copy of target summon card into play. If Dance of Many leaves play, remove token creature from the game. If token creature leaves play, destroy Dance of Many. If you do not pay two blue during your upkeep, Dance of Many is destroyed. So this is Dance of Many, and I just had an interesting conversation uh, with MTG Phil about Dance of Many, because here's a second copy, by the way, I ordered two copies. Um, the thing with Dance of Many is, yes, it is much cheaper than Clone, but Clone, of course, doesn't have the upkeep cost of two blue. And I'm thinking if I have to pay two blue every time and keep two blue open to counter, because, hey, you're playing with blue, uh, that seems a little steep. And then um, I think Phil told me you can also look at it in a different way where you can say I can drop this for two blue and it's really easy to still keep two blue open to kind of protect the token that I've just made with a counter spell. So that's just a different way of looking at it. So I, I, I thought it was quite an interesting discussion. And I guess like most things, it really depends on the type of deck that you're playing. So I wouldn't go and say Dance of Many is always better or Clone is always better. I usually pick Clone over Dance of Many, um, but maybe that's the wrong choice. Who knows? Let me know what you think about uh, Dance of Many versus Clone. Which one is your favorite and why? Or what type of deck do you think suits Dance of Many better than Clone? Like I'm interested to to hear from you. Um, okay, so these are the first two cards, and these are uh, these two are also the same, um, but they're also cards from the dark. And let's have a look. It is Witch Hunter, and then this should also be a Witch Hunter. Exactly, these are two Witch Hunters. Really cool art. Really, really spooky art. Jesper Mirforce, the artist. Uh, two white and two to cast for a 1-1. One, one but it has a pretty cool ability, an ability you wouldn't really expect in white. And that is that first you can tap it in which hunter does one damage to target player. So it looks a little bit like this guy, like the Timmy, um, but it's not as good because it can only damage target player. I guess you can even damage yourself with it if you would want to, maybe with a mirror universe situation where you want to deal, inflict as much damage as possible on yourself. Um, and also I think the second ability is more interesting. You can play two white and one, Return target creature opponent controls from play to owner's hand. Enchantments on target creature are destroyed. So this is a great protection from control magic because of that second line. Enchantments on target creature are destroyed. Um, another interesting thing here is that you can play this really well in combination with Preacher. You know, Preacher, another 1-1 one, one from the dark that you can tap and then you gain control of target creature and opponent controls, but the opponent gets to choose. So the opponent is going to give you his least... Uh, strong creature, right? But with Witch Hunter, you could basically use your Witch Hunter, get rid of the weakest creature of your opponent, then tap your Preacher to kind of get the best um, creature that your opponent has. So that could definitely be uh, a way that you can play this in a way that I can see, you know, both cards working together. It's a little, little nice, nice synergy, I guess. So 
these are my dark cards. Thank you very much. Uh, Robbie is a great trader and he also sends the cards pretty quickly. So that's, that's always quite nice, you know, when you buy something and you have it in the mail. Now let's take a look at this. This is quite interesting. Sarah Huntley Limbarger. I guess I'm going to blur this, by the way. I'm now reading it out loud. There's the whole addresses on there. So I'm definitely going to blur this, but it's quite interesting. It's from the United States, it seems. A lot of stamps are here. You know what? I'm going to open this last. I'm going to keep this for last. I have no idea what this is. I'm going to start with this. I also really have, I have a small idea of what this is. It is in a nice bubble envelope. So that is good and secure. And let's have a look. It seems to be in top loader, so that's good as well. Let me just use the scissors. We're gonna open it up here as well. Ooh, we can already see part of the cart. Now I don't wanna spoil anything, so I'm gonna turn it around. Oh, <laughs> I guess it was double-sided. Well, that doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna put this here. Look at this. Oh, now I know who, the, who this is from. This is from Wouter and very well packed. Look at that. And here is a City of Brass on the other side, a Chronicles one. And I'm trying to get the cards out, but they are pretty sturdy. So let's give it a try. Maybe try to take out one at a time. There we go. One at a time is possible, it seems. Nice top loader. And oh, there are actually two City of Brasses. This is a really useful reprint. If you're playing budget old school, which if you follow the channel, you probably know I really, really enjoy doing that. Um, City of Brass is really something you need for your collection. I'm fortunate enough to actually have four black bordered City of Brasses, but then I thought it's nicer if I build a complete white border budget version of a deck, if I also have these City of Brasses from Chronicles, and I also have the World Championship City of Brasses. So really a beautiful card, and really if you're starting out in old school, I would really recommend just to buy four of these. Just buy four Chronicles. I would, personally, I would not spend it on Arabian Nights lands. I would just get these Chronicle and save the money to get other cards that maybe are not reprinted, um, you know, in, in, in a set in old school. For example, you know, Power Nine, of course, being the obvious example of that. So nice two city of brasses and a nice dragon whelp. This is actually dragon whelp number three. Look at it. This is a dragon whelp that has seen some battles. I like it. And the art is still, it's still great art. For the people that don't know dragon whelp, two, two red and two to cast uh, summon dragon flying and you can pay one red to give it plus one plus O. Oh. And if you, if more than three is spent this way, Dragon Whelp is destroyed at the end of turn. It's actually a 2-3 flyer. I find this card pretty unique because it's got this fire breathing effect in it. And yes, if you pay more than three, it's destroyed, but maybe you don't really care. There are so many situations, uh, especially in red, where you just want to deal as much damage as possible. So I think this card I wouldn't say it's underplayed because it does see some play, but I always feel like it has more potential. I love the combo with Dwarf and Warriors. It's just more kind of the way we used to play it. Um, but yeah, I think Dragon Whelp is, is a great card in aggro strategy. So that's the Dragon Whelp. And we also had another card. Now I actually don't know what card this is. And look, it's really dark. It's just like some kind of, oh, that's a sleeve, of course, okay. So let's turn it around and it's a diabolic machine. Yeah, so this is again for the, the dark tournament that I was talking about. I don't know if I'm gonna play this, but I mean, it is a pretty strong creature in the dark only. It's 70 cast for an artifact creature. Uh, for three, you can regenerate it, which is pretty sweet. It's a four, four with lovely Anson Maddox art. And then actually, I think this is also a diabolic machine. And there we go. Oh, it's actually a living armor. Okay. Interesting. Not sure what I want to do with this card. 
It's a 40 cast for an artifact. Uh, tap and sacrifice living armor to put a plus zero plus X counter on target creature where X is target creature's casting cost. Okay, interesting. I'm sure there are some shenanigans that you can do with this. It seems pretty bad, but I do really like the art. I like the idea. Sacrifice living armor. You can save a creature with it. And also it might work really nicely with Diamond Valley. What I also like is that you don't have to pay any cost to tap it and sacrifice it. So once it's on the board, you can just use it whenever. And it's a counter, you know? Interesting. Anyway, so that's Living Armor. So now let's open up the last letter. I'm really, this is really interesting. This is really interesting. A card from the United States. I'm not expecting anything from the US. So I'm going to open it carefully because there seems to be a letter in here. Okay. <laughs> that is pretty nice. Oh, sorry. I'm not really showing showing it properly. Okay, so I see something with planning. Um, let me just check first if there are no personal, if there's no personal information on here. Um, there's also a card in here. I'm not gonna check it out. I'm first gonna have a look at the letter. And, oh, here we go. Timmy. Thanks for the deck photo and great story. Appreciate all you do for the old school community. Great events will happen next year. So start planning. Thanks, Brian. Oh, this is, there was a Halloween competition um, where a brew competition where Brian asked to, um, to send in your best Halloween or to design a Halloween deck with the story and sent that in. And I made a deck uh, inspired on scavenger folk and my deck was basically based in in scarwood actually I'll, I'll put a uh, a picture here of that deck and um, I think I've, I've posted the deck as well on the community line but thank you very much you know this is what I love you join a competition you you know that's already nice by itself and then they sent you a, th a thank you all the way from the states you know that that you joined so thank you Brian I really appreciate it um, I will also put a, put a, put some more information in the description below about, you know, Brian and all the things he does for old school, his Twitter account and stuff, if you're interested in following him. Um, and here we have the card. Nice top loader. And let's flip it. Bam! And order of the Ebon Hand. Nice. And here, 2020 from the Halloween event. That is really sweet. That is really nice to get. Thank you, Brian, for this. Really sweet. Protection from white. It's actually a good card. As you know, I'm a collector of everything that's Fallen Empire as well. I, just, I, I think I just collect too many things, too many excuses to keep buying cards. Anyway, th thank you very much for this. And I'm, I'm looking forward to... Uh, be a part of more of your events in the future, you know, to be a participant or whatever, you know, it's uh, it's always good. And I want to thank you for watching another Timmy Talks and for watching another mail day. This was a pretty busy mail day. Look at all. Look at it all. Bam. That's a lot of cards. So thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by watching the video. Hey, you're already doing that. Uh, what you can also do is uh, subscribe if you're not a sub yet. Leave a comment, leave a like, all that helps. You can also become a patron of the show by joining Timmy Talks on Patreon. So there's a, a link probably popping up right now. Click on that link and you can see how you can become a patron of the show and help the channel grow even bigger. Um, for now, thank you for watching. And let's take a look at the end scroll to our amazing, fantastic, super channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Think it is, think it is, somebody can see.